Hi guys! It is a spectacularly gorgeous, and I mean over the top beautiful, it is a gorgeous late autumn evening here in paradise in LA, baby. We are in LA, baby, getting as far away from Ithaca, New York as we can get. Good Lord. Looks like it's going to be 78 degrees in LA on Christmas. A high of 18, I think, at my place in New York. Can't imagine why I'm going to be here on Christmas. But anyway, today, it is Sunday, December 18th. And I just realized, guys, that, uh, you know, since Elliot Jacobson and I were doing our, you know, our little Q&A about the collapse of a planet, I totally let my Manga Bay Roundup, my Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant, whiz right on by, and uh, I can tell by all of the cards and letters I've been getting from people uh, asking me what happened to the Manga Bay Roundup for all of you people uh, who just can't wait to hear. <clears throat> Fairly short and sweet one here in the holidays, but uh, we're gonna. Is this the second to the last roundup of 2022? All right. Now this one I did like it's a little bit of hopium, but you know I. I am what I am doing at Bugs in a Jar Farm is building a wetland where there was no wetland. I have. To Depending on how you define the word pond, I have dug four ponds on uh, at Bugs in a Jar. Unbelievable. The number of frogs, the number of newts, these beautiful red and black spotted salamanders, up to that I know of six amphibian species have moved into Bugs in a Jar. And right here, if you build it, the amphibians will come. Researchers show new ponds. New ponds boost species at risk. There you go. This is uh, out of Switzerland, where local authorities and nonprofits have created hundreds of new ponds on farms and forests in Switzerland. Two decades of monitoring, 12 amphibian species showed that 10 of them expanded into more ponds, increasing their population numbers. The strategy is promising in similar settings. Yep, so we're actually starting off with some hopium, and I highly suggest building ponds uh, while you still can. All right, from hopium back to reality. Gee, do you think so? Historic, historic European Union law against deforestation linked imports ignores Brazil's Cerrado. Yes, the European Union as we were talking about last week, has agreed on the text of a law against imports of commodities like soy, cocoa, and palm oil that come from deforested areas. Of course, as we were talking last week, this ban does not uh, ban the import of wood pellets from uh, forests right here in the good old U.S. of A. And it also uh, also, activists note that it only covers forest, well, unless you're a forest that is being, you know, bulldozed into oblivion for wood pellets, not counting those forests. Okay. Uh, it only covers forests that aren't going and in, turned into wood pellets and also does not cover what they call other wooded land. Other wooded land, which 
obviously would include Brazil's biodiverse Cerrado savanna, almost half of which has already been destroyed, mostly to grow soy for export to China and the European Union. Um, the text also does not regulate corn. You know, from the other end, uh, the, it does not regulate corn, nor does it apply to the financial institutions that lend to commodity producers. Mm, do you think so? So, uh, you know, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel, and I thought this was a, a joke, but uh, this week they're doing their, their YouTube video is about the Mennonites. Uh, I mean, the Mennonites are major planet eaters. They're, they're not just planet nibblers. Uh, I mean, I mean these damn Mennonites uh, are, are down there just hell bent on uh, destroying the Amazon rainforest. We'll get, we'll uh, talk about this a little bit more in a minute. But if you want to see what Mennonites are, are doing down in the Amazon, good God Almighty, it's, it just never ends. Okay, asking the question, uh, looking at Japan, can forest planting reduce climate disaster risk? Yep, yep, yep. Um, while acknowledging the limits of forest ability to prevent landslides, uh, Japan's forestry agency, I I anyway, th this is the usual hopium. Good luck. Um, let's see what is happening in Sierra Leone's fishing villages. We have a reality check from Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, this is looking at the Sherbro Estuary. Okay, like other coastal areas in West Africa, the Sherbro Estuary is already suffering the impacts of climate change including flooding and higher temperatures. Uh, there you go. So they're trying, you know, to plant mangroves and build seawalls. Not doing too well, obviously. Okay. Uh, they've been talking about uh, these planet eating this planet eating fishing company out of China, Dalian Ocean Fishing Company, has now been sanctioned by the U.S. Yes, China, which operates the world's largest distant water fishing fleet and has a long history of fisheries offenses, denounced the sanctions, saying that it, meaning China, is a, quote, responsible fishing country. Yes. Okay. More hopium. All right, we you know as we're all waiting for uh, we're all waiting for Lula to save the planet, to save the Amazon. What's going on down in the Amazon right now? In Brazil's agricultural heartland, rivers run dry as monoculture advances. 
This is the Paraná River Basin has suffered an unprecedented drought since 2021, affecting hydropower generation, riverborne food shipments, and freshwater supplies for 40 million people across Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay. Uh, the prolonged drought has hit some of the region's most important reserves. Uh, yeah. The drought has drained lagoons, made uh, the reserve more prone to wildfires, disrupted breeding cycles of native birds. Yep, yep, yep. Environmentalists blame the advance of large-scale monoculture in the region, which has cleared most of the forest and ushered in changes in rain patterns and droughts. Uh, Groot and I were watching a good new documentary on the National Geographic channel called The Territory. If you, if you have the Nat Geo channel, they have a new doc out simply called The Territory if you want to see what's going on down there in the Brazilian Amazon. But you know you don't want to have any bricks close by because you're going to want to throw it through uh, your TV screen and pretty much just kill everybody you see. All right, you know, all about, you know, planting trees to save the planet. We have one small problem, uh, at least in South and Southeast Asia, is that nearly half of replanted trees die. Yes, the recent survey of reforestation efforts in South and Southeast Asia found that about half of the trees planted as part of such projects died within 10 years. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and this, this, this is true anywhere, all of this, these reforestation things. They get all of this press and uh, hopium and apocalyptimism, and they plant a billion trees. And then what you don't hear about is that a half a billion of them die in the first 10 years, and then uh, the rest of them probably get cut down and turned into wood pellets. All right, what's going on with wildfires? In the western U.S., wildfires are climbing up the snowiest mountains of the western U.S. Forest fires are getting larger and hotter in the western U.S., shrinking the mountain snowpacks vital to communities and ecosystems. When a wildfire burns on mountain slopes, snow that falls later in the winter is more exposed to sun and wind, making it melt or evaporate faster and earlier than ever before. Burned land is recovering more slowly as the region warms, leaving less water for trees and plants to regrow and increasing the risk of erosion and flooding. This is one more of the tipping points that... Uh... Oh, and I love it. Well, I guess, do we love it when we see the actual word doom in a Manga Bay headline? This is looking at the western Hulok Gibbon, where we find that Trafficking and habitat loss spell doom for Bangladesh's western Hulak gibbons. I didn't have any idea that there were any gibbons still living in Bangladesh. Well, in a couple of years, there won't be. The western Hulak gibbon is globally in, is a globally endangered species, but in Bangladesh is now considered critically endangered due to continuing habitat depletion, hunting, and trafficking 
according to a survey last year, Bangladesh's gibbon population has dropped by 84% over the last four decades, now standing at 469 individuals. The apes are still hunted for food locally and trafficked across the border to India and China for the illegal pet trade. And of course, uh, you know, habitat destruction. Uh, you can kiss goodbye. The Western Hulak Gibbon. Uh, okay, what is going on in the Ecuadorian Amazon in this noble savage community of Sinchiruco, quote, Sinchi Sinchi Urco is coated with oil as the Quichua people go up against Petro Ecuador. Good luck on that. In 1985, a road opened through the Quechua community of Sinchiruco in the northern Ecuadorian Amazon. With it came one, this big-ass oil platform, which would lead to repeated complaints of human and environmental rights violations. Uh, Good Lord, uh, going all the way back to 1985. Uh, good Lord. You know, it started out being, you know, Texaco uh, dug it, and now it's found its way to Petro Ecuador. The surrounding communities are still demanding compensation for previous spills. Hmm. After 37 years, the community is saying that enough is enough. Yes. Hmm. All right. Here's a report from the struggling COP15 biodiversity talks. I think we've heard everything we need to know about UN biodiversity uh, talks. Here is more techno, uh, how techno-utopians are going to make fishing and aquaculture more sustainable. Yes, with the rapidly increasing global population, uh, underscoring the need to source more protein more sustainably. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Let's go check out the latest hydropower dam in Sulawesi. <clears throat> a Jakarta-based hydropower company aims to dam the Karama River in western Sulawesi as part of a clean energy product project to help wean the country off of coal. Yes. Uh, and so you can kiss goodbye a bunch of it, well, in addition to all of the, uh, the forest and animals are going to kill, you can kiss goodbye all these important archaeological sites uh, going underwater. Yep. Well, as if Indonesia had any chance of uh, hitting its climate goals, that will be dependent on fully protecting Indonesia's remaining peatlands and mangroves. Yes. 
National Park, once covering an expanse of more than 826 square miles of the Colombian rainforest, Tanigua National Park has lost 29% of its forest over the past 20 years, and the majority of that loss has occurred over the last four years. And satellite data suggests forest loss has kept a quick pace in 2022. Uh, authorities say illegal cattle ranching, coca growing, and land grabbing are driving deforestation in the protected area. Much of it reportedly done in the hands of armed groups affiliated with FARC dissonant factions. Local communities been threatened by these groups. Uh, all right, we have Bolivia looking to uh, save the planet with lithium mining. Yes. As fossil fuel aggravates climate breakdown, companies and governments are looking to lithium-ion batteries. Yes, to replace carbon-intensive technologies. Lithium prices have hit all-time highs, pushing the market to seek more sources to meet forecasted demand and to fill the gap. Companies are now turned to Bolivia, hmm, whose 2019 election was marred by turmoil, exacerbated by allegations of foreign powers seeking its lithium. Uh, six foreign firms. Uh, Ready to get digging up the planet to save the planet. Uh, same thing going on. Uh, I was reading in Idaho, I guess, right here. I did not realize that uh, the Philippines still had any pangolins. Uh, anyway, the Philippine pangolin is critically endangered, hunted to the brink of extinction for its scales and meat. Uh, anyway, would you believe that Indonesia's mangrove revival is being hindered by conflicting policies. Yes. Alright, we have more on the uh, lithium mining boom in, in, in Bolivia. Lithium extraction has been known to deplete and contaminate fresh water impact wildlife populations and the livelihoods of residents. Uh, yep, yep, yep. How many ants live on Earth? At least 20 
quadrillion. All right. Gee, what was happening in Brazil during the COP27 climate talks? Hmm. Deforestation accelerated in Brazil while climate talks were underway in Egypt. Deforestation in Earth's largest rainforest accelerated sharply during the month of November when UN climate talks were underway in Egypt. Uh, looking at 214 square miles of the Brazilian Amazon biting the dust in November, about 60% above average for the month over the past seven years and more than twice last November's rate. And, and of course, you know, what's going on, you know, more than ever, it's uh, since December of 20, this is the last month, the last 12 days of uh, Jair Bozo Nero. So you better believe that this is an all-out, an all-out war has been declared against the Brazilian Amazon before Lula takes over in two weeks to save the planet. All right, what is going on in Guatemala's protected forest? Yes, bill, new bill threatens more oil extraction and roads in Guatemala's protected forest. A bill in Guatemala's Congress would renew a contract for the current oil and gas pipeline in Laguna del Tigre National Park and make it easier to contract for future drilling. Uh, the region's largest oil reserves pass from southern Mexico through the Petén and into Belize. This is exactly where I am heading in a few weeks, is right down into the middle of this. Um, additional development could lead to the creation of roads, making it easier for illegal loggers, drug traffickers, and land grabbers to move into the park, as happened when the original oil field was created in the 1980s. All right. Uh, good Lord, well, I thought this was a small plate this week. Good Lord. All right. Climate change could force 1.2 billion people to move by 2050. Is the world even remotely ready. In a world beset by rising temperatures, devastating storms, and flash floods, climate migration and disaster displacement are quickly becoming the signal 21st century crisis. The vast majority of those worst affected are in the world's poorest and fastest warming countries. Yet, rather than step up to meet the challenges of climate dislocation, most national governments, international agencies, blah, 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 are burying their heads in the sand. Short-termism prevails over long-range forecasting, planning, and preparation. Do you think so? Uh... What is going on with the uh, world's insects? Uh, what is going on with the world's insects? Climate change is hammering insects in the tropics and everywhere else, say scientists. A new review paper finds that climate change is pounding insects in a wide variety of ways all over the world because insects 
are so sensitive to temperature change, climate changes imp <coughs> impacting them directly. Uh, but climate change is also causing insects to change their behavior. We, we've heard all of this. Uh, good, the, the, the insects, you know, sorry insects. Good God. Uh, does this ever end? Here is more on the Mennonites uh, taking down the Peruvian Amazon. Um, this is the central Peruvian Amazon rainforest where the Mennonites have been illegally deforesting land and encroaching upon indigenous territories to expand their agricultural fields. Satellite data show that Mennonite colonies are now the leading cause of large-scale deforestation in the Peruvian Amazon. I have to admit, guys, I have a, I, I would need to... Uh, uh, eh, ding, ding, ding. But uh, maybe it's true. Uh, Mennonites. Uh, anyway, good Lord, uh, this just goes on and on and on, guys, but I understand I'm talking to myself, and, uh, anyway, Get out there and enjoy this spectacularly gorgeous weather in Southern California, baby. Where it never rains in Southern California. Bye, guys.